first talk is by Dr. Altmas Sheikh, uh, and he will be talking about matchmaker, make me a match, selecting glucose lowering combination for type 2 diabetes mellitus. So, Dr. Altmas is consultant, uh, diabetologist, physician at Sheffi Hospital in Bombay. And there are several awards to his credit. I think uh, there's a long list of awards. So many best, best award, best award, best awards. So I heard him several times, a wonderful speaker. I think he's very, very, very coming up young, very popular speaker in the uh, Clinical Diabetes Forum. So over to Dr. Uh, Altmas. Thank you, sir, for that uh, very, very kind introduction and good words for, about me. Good, evening, good afternoon, everybody. I think I'm going to talk about the ADA deciphering session of 2021, and I'm going to bring out to you six points. Those were discussed in this particular session. So what are these combinations? How do they help us in making that match? And which combinations we should be careful? How do we give those deciphering points to you? I'm going to talk to you. The, I think point number one I'm going to talk to you about is going to be on incretins and SGLT2 inhibitors. Then we'll shift to insulin and SGLT2 inhibitors. Then combination of two injectable drugs, insulin and GLP RA1, GLP1 RAs. Then dual agonist and triple agonist. What was talked in ADA. Then we have some combined statements of various guidelines. And I think lastly, we'll talk about what are disease modifying drugs in diabetes, DMDs. That was a new term which was introduced in this year's ADA. So coming to the first one that we were discussing, our very famous Dr. Ralph Drifonzo, who gave the omnius octet, the pathophysiology of diabetes, the, the man behind that, he speaks about a triple combination therapy in ADA. He says that the triple combination of SGLT2 inhibitor, the GLP-1 RA, and a TZD or a pyoglitazone will be really, really helpful for various reasons. And the reasons he gave was one, to optimally answer achievement of uh, uh, glycemic control, prevention of microvascular disease and also prevention in renal disease or renal complications. So while talking this, he says that there are at least six uh, of the octets or six of the causes of diabetes which are addressed by the GLP-1 RAs, which is very important to address these pathophysiologic disturbances in the present type of diabetes. Moving on to his part two of the combination about TZDs, he says that Five liter zone is a cost effective. He adds that it is also a cardioprotective drug for type 2 diabetes. So apart from the six pathophysiologic defects which the GLP-1 RA are taking, five liter zone is also talking about the relation to the fat in relation to CV protection. And then he concludes finally by saying that the triple therapy with SGLT2-1 inhibitor with GLP-1 RA and five liter zone will optimally bring good glycemic control will give will do prevention of microvascular disease at all levels will help in prevention and treatment for cv as well as renal complications so this was point number one which came out very well and that was the uh, first point then we have dr chantel matthew who she spoke about the combination of insulin with sglt2 inhibitor so one injectable and one oral previous one was one injectable and two oral here it's one injectable and one oral and she says it is quite logical she felt to combine sglt2 with insulin in type 2 diabetes because of their pathophysiological action and also the mechanism these two drugs try to bring together one thing of note she says that when you are adding sglt2 inhibitors to an insulin regimen be careful about reduction in insulin doses of around 10 to 50 percent to start with if the patient is fragile she, she, she talks about use maybe redux, reduce the dose of around 5 to 10 percent and then then take it and most importantly she says that the trial data that uh, dr chantal matthew presented it has shown that combining SGLT2 inhibitors and insulin is completely beneficial, especially in those people with high HPA1C and importantly with lowering of uh, the insulin doses and also that it will cause less weight gain. So on one side, Dr. Chantel says that it will reduce your doses of insulin. On another side, it will reduce weight of the patient. On another side, it will reduce HBA1C weightage. So what she finally says is the price in some people if the patients are not selected carefully for administration of sglt2 inhibitor 
in those cases dr shantil matthew says that the price to pay while combining insulin and hcl2 inhibitors would be glycosuria uh, uh, which may cause genital mycotic infections in some but luckily in our indian context we have seen very rarely these mycotic infections coming up although we have seen uti is a little more common so that's how we decipher ada 2021 for this particular combination for our type 2 diabetes patient and it's and that's how we move to the point number 3 the two injectable combination insulin as well as glp1 are a combination and this was given by dr tina wibol the dr tina wibol says that when you combine these two injectable therapies this becomes most effective glucose lowering agent because it again covers a vast array of pathophysiological defects and that it is very effective to get hba1c under control from this particular point according to her and she adds further that patients on insulin with cvd are potential candidates also for sglt2 inhibitor and or glp1 ra therapy because once the patient is on this particular combination it helps the patient compliance it helps the patient to be considered for their good adherence and compliance as well as the fasting and hba1c target should be decided before starting therapy i think that's a very important clinical pearl which we should use for our indian patients also to improve adherence and compliance is one of the most important thing because of unreasonable expectations and unrealistic expectations that our patients may have so decide the target prior to starting these things counsel the patient talk to them finally what she says is the diabetes therapy is more about talking to the patient making them comfortable look at the patient preference look at the patient cuisine look at the patient affordability look at how the patient is going to literally do it including their literacy level and including their level of understanding and you have to take multiple factors into co co combination multiple factors into these uh, combination and the competence of the patient and the family members also which will help to comply with these combinations and will help us i think moving on to the fourth point which was uh, by dr uh, david uh, dlso who talks about dual agonists the dual peptides and he says in his trial which concludes like this that the dual agonists were better than the placebo in type 2 diabetes but however the magnitude of results are not really promising so this becomes a really important study he he talked about the studies on the mice and he talked about the studies on humans however he says that if if the receptors of insulin and other molecules which come metabolically in the path of diabetes if we use multi receptor agonist which perform the function of all the individual receptor agonist that's going to be much better it will give us much good results in controlling uh, diabetes in getting again getting the hang of the control of complications of diabetes and that these agonist should give us a better results in much more future human trials so that was uh number 4 and what he concluded finally was that the multi receptor agonist strategy drug development is going to be the future is going to be effective and we need a little more better understanding so i think uh, we do not know how many of these patients uh, from such trials would be in relation to indian context i think time will tell us when these trials are done by dr david uh, uh alessio he's going to let us uh, know about which centers in india would be selected for these kind of uh, combination so coming to point number 5 about algorithms between ada between easd and ace so american diabetes association european association of study for diabetes and the american association of clinical endocrinologists they all have given their guidelines they all have given their targets but the common thing what what they have is that the key to successful therapy in their statements they talk about for the type 2 diabetes is the insight of this particular condition and that there is ability of there should be an ability of the physician to individualize the therapy to this particular patient and the medication characteristics to be matched and then it's to be given to avoid any complications for example somebody with history of a cancer of pancreas somebody history with a cancer of bladder somebody with history of osteoporosis you would want to give combinations which will be fruitful and not detrimental for that particular uh, patient i think another thing which was given uh, by this particular uh, 
ADA for deciphering it for our population, what we can derive is a disease modifying drugs. So what are these disease modifying drugs in diabetes or DMDs? We of late till now we knew since past 30, 40 years that DMDs have been there for rheumatoid arthritis, the chronic inflammatory joint disorders which help in that. But here we are not talking about maps, you're not talking about antibodies, you're talking about renaming the same drug because there is reduction in renal complication, there is reduction in cardiovascular complication, there is a longevity of life, there is reduction in mortality and all cause mortality. So the drugs like SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP1 are a According to this particular uh, paper, they say that it should be a simple approach for type 2 diabetes and that they, they should be called as disease modifying drugs because they do help in the longevity, they do help in reduction of complications and prolonging the life, whether it is uh, SGLT2 or whether it is a GLP-1 RA. I think, ladies and gentlemen, over for now and we'll meet you in Q&A session. Thank you. Over to chairpersons.